Hello everybody and welcome to the Arclight Gaming Round Robin. This is round 6 of a 21 round Robin. I'm Mr. Jess and tonight with me is Harry Surf. Man, I'm so glad to have you with us tonight. And guys, we've got a really interesting game for us tonight for sure. Hello, uh, I'm Harry Surf, by the way, if no one picked that up. And, well, we do have an interesting game because uh, Carbon Tax... Yeah, so these two teams, Carbon Tax is a team that, well, theoretically haven't gone, or have gone undefeated, have yet to drop a game, and their only real loss was because they failed to attend one of uh, the rounds, and as such, they were warranted a loss. And Team Volker, a bit similar case scenario, they haven't technically lost a round, but they kind of have three losses because of the fact that they were on, had a hiatus, and have returned back into the round robin. So basically, these two teams are undefeated, and we're going to see one of these titans fall down today, tonight. And already with pick and ban phase, we're seeing Carbon Tax banning out Annie and Janna, which are probably target bans to Team Volca, as well as LeBlanc and Aureli being banned away from Carbon Tax. Yeah, well, I'm looking at... Like, LeBlanc, first up, doesn't really look like some kind of targeted ban, because she is really strong. Even though she's lost her silence, she is she still has a lot of power. Um, just crazy amounts of damage. That's pretty much all she's got. Like she's fast and mobile, but she just got a lot of damage. And Irelia, it may be a targeted ban. I mean, they might be going to look for some kind of like CC comp, and Irelia can get up to like 50% um, tenacity, so that's quite powerful. And uh, if they're going for, looking for something like that, they might want to get rid of um, Irelia, but I'm thinking these may all just be target bans. Yeah, absolutely. Straight Zareth on. being banned as well, so is Lissandra. And Jarvan being picked up straight away from Carbon Tax. Jarvan, a very solid jungler since the uh, preseason patch as well as the new patch, which is patch 5.1. So we're definitely into the new season. And Jarvan seeing a lot of love, a very solid jungler being picked up a lot with the smites and whatnot. Like, what do you reckon with the whole new change to the new smite? How there's two charges and everything. I, at first, I really, really didn't like the smite because I was like, oh, now it's on a longer cooldown and oh, it's going to be so much harder to jungle. But like, just like thinking about that one thing, for, I'm going to be going off uh, about more stuff, but just about that one thing, think about it. Like, when you've got your smite, more often than not, it's going to be off cooldown for a bit longer than 15 seconds before you hit it again. Because it, they did increase the time uh, of getting a new charge by 15 seconds, where it's at 75 seconds instead of 60 seconds for a new smite charge. But that, because you'll be walking around and doing lanes and stuff while your smite is off cooldown. So the cooldown is a bit longer, but at the same time shorter, or if not um, the same. And... The, another really big thing with the second smite charge is you can run into a lane and use like the chilling smite or something which we've been seeing so much of in these games or any kind of the uh, combat smites you use on an enemy champion and it's not oh I need to wait 60 seconds to be able to go back and smite some kind of monster and, and get that uh, jungle buff or you can smite that monster and then go back into the lane and, uh, and go and hit them again. Also, I have noticed that you can smite J Dragon and Baron twice, like once at the start and once at the end, but that's a different story. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does allow you to, say, misplay or use your smite a little bit more. Hey, I'm just going to chuck it on you to get you a bit slower, or just in case they flash out of the way, or if they use some kind of escape ability, you, you haven't just lost this extremely powerful summoner spell for a really long time, because it does let you go back into your jungle and go and pick up another monster. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be providing a lot of like objective control and whatnot, especially with Dragon, as yeah. well as taking those jungle camps. We've seen in the pick and ban phase, and we haven't really highlighted much so far, Thresh was being picked up, <laughs> and Nah on the side of Team Volker, but also a Scion being picked up by Carbon Tax. Scion, a champion not a lot of people have seen much, and likewise even Sejuani, which I believe we saw on Monday, since patch 5.1 came out, Sejuani seen a bit of love. But your thoughts, Sejuani, Scion, what do these champions provide, and why didn't we see them till now? Yeah, well, Sejuani and Scion, they are, they're, they're both really quite interesting champions. Like, first off, Sejuani has just crazy amounts of CC and chase potential. I'm, I'm quite surprised that just 
even before now and just before these patches that we haven't been seeing a lot more of Sejuani because she is really strong and she can pretty much just stun the entire enemy team instantly with her ultimate. So, um, yeah, I, I, do, I am a big fan of Sejuani, but Sion is really interesting because he can be played both ways, both tanky or with a lot of damage because he does already have his passive that gives him more health on his W, I think. I don't know. It's one of them and it doesn't change, so not that important. But he can get damage and still be kind of tanky, or he can go tanky and still get what well, he gets really, really tanky, but he also has a lot of damage from his Q and his armor um, shredding. So, yeah. Um, not sure why we actually haven't seen very much of them, aside from the fact that Scion's ultimate, to counter it, I mean, all you need to do is step sideways a little bit, but, um, you know, aside from that, it's, um, they are both very viable and very, very powerful champions. Also, yeah. a Leona and Jinx as well, being chucked down into the bottom lane. Right yeah. there. I don't see Leona's um, summoner name, actually. I think we should just uh, keep it to, I think it's like one of those Chinese or Korean character names, and as such we can't uh, use it. So I'm going to be calling him No Name for uh, the duration of the game. And Olivia <laughs> being locked in from Team Volker. That's uh, a champion I haven't seen much too off, or often, in fact, ever. Last time I believe I've seen Anivia was, I think, Season 3 with Froggen was just a no Nivea, like it was a guaranteed ban every time against CLG EU. I've not seen a Nivea. Look, awesome, I'm happy. I'm really stoked. Yeah, I, I am very, I love a Nivea. Although I hate playing against her. Oh, that egg that is wall crazy. is such a pain. The, the wall, the egg, the ultimate, it's just zoning tools 101. They are doing a lot of swapping around on Vulcan right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we don't know if it's Nar AD Carry or Corky AD Carry. I'm gonna just assume that it's Corky because yeah. who plays yeah. Nar AD Carry, honestly. Okay, yeah. maybe Team Vol- Nope. Nope. Team, Never mind. Team Volker! It might be. Hidden Strategy! ADC Nar. <laughs> Next big thing ever since they changed the way he's been ranked throws. Guys, but I'm- Looking at this comp so far, so you've got on the side of Carbon Tax, you've got Sion in a top lane for Kuki, Hasuda playing a Jarvan in a jungle, No Name with Ziggs in a mid lane, Meta Sheep with Jinx, <laughs> And Crayola and Leona, that's a very solid team. And in comparison, you've got the side of Team Volka where they've got Lush on uh, Na, Wangza with the Sejuani, Gizelle on the Anivia, Ziz with Corky, and finally Pozmil playing the Thresh. These two different team comps, like, what, what is the difference? Like, is there any sort of, like, this one champion defines this team comp and whatnot? Well, straight up, you can just look straight at uh, Carbon Tax and go just wombo combo, wombo combo. I love seeing these kind of things where you've got the Javan ultimate, locks them all in, Leona stunned, just stuns them all in place, then a Ziggs bomb coming in, a Jinx ultimate, and then a Scion charge straight down the middle and just whack them all right at the end. It's just, it's going to be colossal. I don't know what order they're going to do it in. They couldn't do it in any order, really. And, um, and I'm just looking to see this massive wombo combo, and it's it's one of those things that can just end the game instantly. Because if they play really late into the game and they manage to pull off this wombo combo, it doesn't really matter who's fed, who's really strong. It's just, you just trap them in, blow them up sky high, get an ace, maybe even a pentakill, which would be cool, and then just push out and end the game. Because it's just... Those late game death timers get really long. I think they cap out at 50 minutes now. Yeah, absolutely. But, and um, yeah, you looking got on, um, those death timers, man, uh, that's huge. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you got for Team Volker and, as well, um, Lucian. Sorry, where did I get Lucian? Damn it, Nas' name, Lush. It, it, now, now Lucian's stuck in my head. It's. Everyone's. We'll call him. L Lucky? Luck? We'll call him. Luck. Luck. Yeah, I like that. Luck. Yeah. We'll call him but Luck. I have to agree, though. The, the wombo combo from, <laughs> from Carbon Tax is an absolute set. I love the Super Mega Death Rocker mixed with Mega Inferno Bomb. That double ultimate from Ziggs, Jinx. Uh, this combination, Ziggs, can just, they could basically blow up, if anything, and just instantly annihilate any squishies. And Corky and Nivea, granted, they're not like the, they're not going to be very tanky. I think, I think the only real tank ones would be the Nah, Lush, uh, the Nah. Dang, dang you, Luck. 
So nah, this is one in the thresh. And <laughs> yeah. Olivia and Corky most likely will sit at the back and be squishy. And so you've got the one we're coming, coming out from uh, Carbon Tax. I kind of like the counter-initiation, or the sort of mini-disengage that comes out from Team Volker. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, like, if they do try to try and jump on them, I mean, there's nothing that's really going to stop that Wombo combo, let's be honest. But it, um, in some kind of team fight, possibly without uh, what someone's ultimate award, can really just throw that... Um, big chunk of ice and just start Harry? Gage and pick off a few you let's me yes. Oh no, I thought you were I thought you were yes? dying for I thought you were Hello. dying for a second. I, I thought I thought what? you were, I thought what you happened? were dying for a second. Like you, you just cut off for a good three seconds like No Harry no don't leave me How could you leave me? <laughs> It'll be sad to see you go. The ultimate. Great engage. Oh, actually, Ziggs. Uh, instead of calling Ziggs, Ziggs no name, can we call Ziggs Box Box? Box Box. Yeah, that 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 sounds a bit cool. Because technically speaking, there are two boxes. It's like Box Box with a Super Mega um Mega Inferno bomb. That'll be hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So Ziggs is now referred to as Box Box. But I'm I'm, yeah. I'm definitely liking Straight this up. game. Like I'm definitely liking this game, and we saw on Monday, and this is between uh, the Zero Gravity Gaming and Bentry Born. So two teams that I don't I don't think either one lost. No, Zero Gravity Gaming lost in round one, and so it was the Sejuani we saw that for the first time coming up from Michael the Dugong, and every time Oriana, who was played by Zero Gravity Gaming with Silfarian, he will land the Shockwave, trap three of them in, but Michael the Dugong will reply instantly with the Glacial Prison coming out from Sejuani. So that AoE lockdown, plus it's also got a good range. So I don't think a lot of people could under uh, respect and plus also underestimate Sejuani's ultimate. And it's one, I think it's going to be one of those big turning events, if anything, for the game. Um, I don't know if you would probably agree with that. Like the Sejuani ultimate, definitely underrated ability. Anyway, guys, uh, I think we might be having some kind of weird tech issues here, but we are underway oh. for the Arclight Gaming round. Robin, this is round six between two behemoths of teams. That is Carbon Tax on the blue side and on the red side, Team Volker. Now, again, for those who are just joining us, this is the Arclight Gaming round, Robin. Both teams theoretically haven't really lost the round in terms of actual play. Summoner's so, Rift. Carbon I'm Tax haven't technically fucker. dropped the ground, nor has Team Volker. But their losses are mounted due to the fact that they've basically not rocked up to certain days. Now, Wings are playing on this Sedge 1. It has been spotted by Carbon Tax. They're simply able to drop the ward and throw a little bomb from Box Box. And you can see the names on the screen. And for those who are wondering who is Box Box, why are referring to this person as Box Box? Ziggs' name, I believe they used Korean or Chinese or another language characters. And as such, they're not registered on my screen for some reason. And as such, it's like two boxes. So, box box for the day today. Harry, are you still exactly. alive with us? Are you with us tonight? Yeah. Alright, good. So, you haven't died just yet. Box right, box. That's, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yes. You were talking loading screen and I just lost you. Uh, I think you may have lost me too. Yeah, a little bit weird <laughs> of how, how yeah. we're going with this. But, guys, it's going to be a really interesting game. We're already seeing a five man defense coming out from Carbon Tax, just trying Maybe to line up to no one really invade. It's a Javan jungle, which has seen a lot of love in uh, as a jungler compared to a Sejuani, who I think recently has been adopted a lot more. With 5.1 patch, I've seen a lot more Sejuani being picked up in that jungle role. But what surprised me was that Rek'Sai was let through the ban phase. It wasn't banned at all, but also wasn't picked. And that's something that interested me for some reason. I'm not sure what you would think on that, Harry. I mean, like, the Rek'Sai is an absolute monster threat. But were the nerfs in patch 5.1 that big? Fact that. Harry? I 
think I'm losing. Hurry on. I'm, I, I might be losing you. Oh. Oh, looks like Harry isn't surviving. Oh, Harry just died. No, Harry! How could you? Anyway, guys, we are trying to get that underway and so sorry about that. Um, I guess you guys are going to be stuck with me for a bit until we can figure out what is happening on Harry's end right there. But basically, this is the patch 5.1, so Rexar has been again let through. Obviously, it has been more than a few weeks, so Rexar is playable. And also, because this is patch 5.1, we're getting a few changes along the way. For instance, Sejuani um, with the new double smile, how Harry mentioned that in the Pink and Band phase. But also the new portal, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, it's a new item that has been introduced into the game, and it spawns Voidling monsters every few seconds, and they just simply walk in and hit the turret phase. Very good for split pushing and tank champions, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see Sion picking that up and playing around with that later on into the game. For this one though, it's in terms of the matchups, I wouldn't I'm seeing Box Box just trying to zone out Nivia. Nivia doesn't have the best of range or the best of landing phases up until she has generated level six to get the Glacial Storm ultimate to clear those minions quite quickly. But Ziggs who's with the bouncing bombs and the satchels has a lot better range and can just zone out a lot easier and just pop out a lot more damage. We see Posmil throwing out the death sensors in the bot lane. Does miss Meta Sheep, unfortunately. And I'll be looking for Posmil, speaking of that bot lane. But the Thresh versus Leona, it's going to rely on the supports in this bot lane to see who will be able to get the edge up to get a kill and whatnot to generate a snowball effect. In the top lane, Luck. With the simple Nas range harassment, we'll be able to get the hyper stacks up onto Scion and just get to do a lot more damage. So most likely it'll be in Lux's favor in the top lane. And he's already got himself a 5 CS lead, or 6 CS right now. Now top lane, mid lane again, still in favor of Box Box for now. Only just about 6 CS lead, maybe due to the fact that he is able to outrange Anivia for now. It will be onto the junglers. My featured matchup or the contested matchup for this would definitely be between Jarvan and Sejuani. What they can do, what they can offer as junglers. What are they able to do pre-6, before they have ultimates? What are they going to do once they have those ultimates? Sejuani, obviously Glacial Prison, and we saw this on Monday. That ultimate is huge. It is able to do wonders. And now speaking of junglers, Asuda has ganked onto Anivia. It did bend the flash. It does force the egg as well, and that will be timed. And Nivia will fall down, giving away the first blood to Box Box. He'll pick up the kill onto Giselle. And that's going to be very good, very good game coming out from Hasuda. Able to generate that instant first blood for Box Box to get the snowball running for him right there. Unfortunately. Guys, if you are just joining us, no, it is not just me simply talking because I love talking so much, even though I kind of do. Unfortunately, my co caster Harry is just. Having a bit of a tech issue, and we're going to get that resolved as we speak right now. We do truly apologize for that. So you might hear some weird sound effects coming out from the background, if anything. But that United first blood permissions. already going on towards contact. In fact, we're seeing a Genko in the ball, and Pogma will fall down, giving Crayola that kill. That was a very good lockup. Coming out from Metaship and Crayola with the stun from the Leona, plus the Flame Chompers coming out from Metaship. It allowed Hasuda also to... Chain CC with the flag and drag giving another kill away towards karma attacks and they're already proving to be a strong threat for this game right now. Channel switched. If anything, truly sorry about that guys. I know uh, it's a bit weird on our end. We're truly sorry. Hopefully Harry's back. I mean he's definitely the comedy styles of what's happening. Now in top lane Locke has definitely gone aggressive onto Kuki. He didn't have Mega Nuff on him. He does have the Nar ultimate. He'll definitely looking for that stun onto the wall. Actually, no, he's decided to just simply throw all the tosses. He does throw the ultimate though. Kuki is quite low. Luck, unfortunately, it will devolve back into Minina and won't be able to get the kill onto Kuki. So that was probably a wasted attempt. Should have altered a lot sooner, in my opinion. But using the boomerang throw is just going to snipe out Kuki. In the mid lane, Hasuda's getting back onto an even but a great counter gank from Wongsa. They're trying their best. Box Box with the Satchel Charge and doing a lot of damage. He will pick up a kill onto Wongsa, so he has avenged Hasuda's death. And now he's chasing up onto Gizal. Gizal's Anivia egg is still down. Unfortunately, though, he's not able to get the snipe with the Mega Inferno Bomb. And as such, Box Box 2 0. Oh, so good for himself. Already got that 16 CS lead. In comparison to Gizal, who's already 26 CS. 0 1 1. 
and hasn't even got himself the Rod of Ages. And Harry, welcome back. Oh god, thank you. Uh, I had to move computers. I hope nothing's happening in game at the moment. I'm just opening up my league line up here. Massive tech. Well, what you're missing out is Locke has, increased, has gone aggressive onto Kuki into Mega Null form to get that kill. So that was his first kill. I've been at top lane as Nar in comparison um, to Scion. So it's 1 0 for Nar. Uh, it's 3 2 overall for Carbon Tax. Boxbox is able to get two of those kills because of the ganks of Hasuda. And now Wongza is ganking onto Boxbox. Boxbox does have Flash. And he's running Flash and Ghost. So a lot of escaping. Escape like Summoner spells for that six. Hopefully, you're all up to date with that kind of little jazz. And also, the bot lane got a kill for Carbon Tax because a very good chain CC from Crayola and Meta Sheep with the stuns from Leona, Flame Choppers from Jinx, and finally the Flag and Drag from Hasuda as well. So, Hasuda's been everywhere on the map right now. And currently, Carbon Tax are onto the Dragon. They have the map control, the visual control, and Volker, Team Volker aren't aware at all that this dragon is happening. That's going to be the first dragon at 8 minutes and a half going towards Carbon Tax. Yeah, early dragons are really just the way to go. Even though they don't give you much stats right at the start of the game, it does put you at an advantage on the enemy team. So they do have that extra dragon, which means that they're going to have that extra power and they're going to be closer to unleashing that Super Saiyan mode of the fifth dragon. And, um,. Picking up little extra kills all over the map, especially for Jinx, is going to be really, really strong because she does scale really well, especially with that 130% attack speed she can get at level 9 from her, which I assume she is maxing, and she is. Of course. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. She does. She's able to outscale that Corky into later games. Now, Suda is ganking back onto Gizal Gizal, and if you should be up there by Suda. Will fall down, giving away Wongza another kill. The turnaround ganks from Wongza and it has just been absurd. They're just doing a lot of damage. Asuda is playing Jarvan, and we've talked about how Jarvan is not naturally the tankiest of champions, and will fall down quite quickly. In the bot lane, though, it is Osmo who's not that tanky either. And he's taking a lot of damage, gets locked up by the solo flare coming up from the Leona pick. Unfortunately, Jinx will pick up one kill. Now, back in the top lane, there's also another fight happening. Kuki is trying his best to tank out too. Nivea has been popped, and Luck was able to get the shutdown goal onto Box Box. The fight's everywhere. 5-5 five, five even in the kills for both teams. And Team Volker are only ahead by 100 gold. Yeah, so I mean, they've managed to really quickly turn that around, especially with getting that Jarvan off in that uh, in that jungle. And just a little bit of kills up in the top. And then just, just managing to pick up these uh, these people off in the... Oh, nah, he's just going to... Dom's yeah, right now. he will uh, pick up that kill, but Kuki avenges his death with that passive. He will avenge him and survive. And it's interesting, like as you were mentioning, like it, these um, Jarvan has been like falling behind. They're just able to turn around fights. It's not that tanky. And we've mentioned a lot of time with the Jarvan pick. He's not naturally the tankiest of champions, like what said Juani is. Just not that innate natural tankiness. They need to have a couple items to be able to tank up. And he's gone for. Well, I believe it's going to be the warrior enchantment for Hasuda. So your thoughts on going for a more damage oriented despite being a bit behind. And to elaborate on that as well, Wongza has gone for the sorcerers or the magus enchantment. So those two different enchantments, like how they play out in terms of these two different junglers. Yeah, well, I mean, Darwin picking up a lot of damage early is... Really, it's not to his advantage because already he's dying extremely quickly just sitting inside the Anivia ultimate because it's doing so much damage to him. And now he's going to be going off and trying to face these people and he's really the only tank on his team at the moment because Sion isn't really tanky in the early game. He is quite tanky right now, but not the tankiest. So, Darwin, he's really going to fall really quickly, especially picking up all that damage. And um, Sejuani, interesting to see her getting the uh, ability power enchantment instead of um, the, the tanky one. Because Sejuani works really, really well when she's tanky. But I mean, well, I just haven't seen that much um, age builds on Sejuani. So it'd be interesting to see if she goes more AP or if she's just going to build tank from now on. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, she has gone for that giant spell, so it might end up becoming a lot tankier from now on. Locke has gone himself that early Sunfire's cape, and now it looks to be a Hex Drinker. Yeah, your thoughts on the Hex Drinker? Is it actually a good item in comparison to Team Comp that Carbon Tax? The Hex provided? Drinker. The Hex Drinker, yes, a really good item, but it all depends on who you're going up against. And, I mean, he is going up against Ion, who doesn't really do that much magic damage, as far as I'm concerned. He's more... Because I think his Q is physical damage. I don't know what his, um, his W or his E are. I'm pretty sure the W may be his, uh, magic damage. But, uh, pick it up a Hex Drinker. Really interesting. There's really only Zeke who's going to be doing a lot of magic damage, so I'm not sure why we're seeing that null uh, magic boat coming out so early uh, from now. Yeah, it may be just because he wants to get a little bit more stats, just like I want to have this much armor and this much magic resist, I want them to be kind of small. So he may be going for that kind of approach, but um, I would have imagined there'd be a lot more health armor coming out of this. Yeah, absolutely, and in the bot lane, we did see Metaship able to pick up his second kill onto Ziz. That lockdown, that chain CC coming out from the Leona Jinx combo is absolutely absurd. Leona stuns. Leona stuns a second time. It allows for the flame choppers to come out for another snare, just denying any form of mobility from any of the champions. So a very good pickup coming out for Jinx, who... Jinx, in comparison against Corky, I feel Corky has a... Well, most times they're not better early in mid game. In comparison to Jinx, but the thing is that yeah. since Jinx is getting those kills, it's actually done quite well for us up going in towards this mid game. Uh, if you yeah. see, if you, if you, I, I wonder yeah, if you Jinx reckon the same thing. Jinx is just one of those champions where, in the early game, she's not going to be as strong as all the other champions because she really relies on being able to poke or her attack speed. Oh, just missing the ult there. Yeah, but that does land the flag drag on the Cosmos. Cosmos will fall down. The teleport also being used by Lark. He does revert back into mini now forms. It's not actually the best thing for him to do. He he'd rather be in mega now form. We also are seeing Kuki. He is playing that Sion. He's positioned himself in that bot lane. He can simply press that ult to just charge into the fight if need be. But it looks as though the teams have pink for Dragon. And it might be the next objective. Volk have already started onto that Dragon. Yeah, and now that Jinx is over the line, although that have pink for Dragon. Oh, here comes the fight. That was a very good play coming out from Volk. was able to lock up three. Now for the rest of the AoE abilities coming from Team Volk to come in. Now Kuki, he's face checking. He's actually doing a very good job distracting three. Now Menashe to sit back at the back to do a lot of damage. In fact, Luck though flashes onto him, picks up the kill. It's a two for one fight now left. Kuki doing his best, flashes over the wall, but Luck is chasing onto him. Dragon has been aggroed as well. It's gonna be a Kuki falling down and an ace going towards Team Volka. A very well played coming fight from Team Volka. Wongsa did an incredible baiting into that brush right there. And Volka, if they're able to juggle the dra um, dragon aggro correctly, they should be able to secure their first dragon of the game. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the biggest fault they just had there was just the fact that Jinx, no one was able to target her because she was so far back that she was hitting those rockets. Level 9, she's got so much attack range. But as soon as that Anivia ultimate hit the ground and Jinx couldn't just leave because that's where the fight was happening, they really would have won that fight if uh, Anivia's ultimate wasn't on the ground. So that's one Anivia's really, really strong point. So, Anivia was able to do a lot of damage onto Jinx, even though she was sitting all the way at the back line of the fight, hitting with those max range rockets, which really is um, one of the reasons why we're so excited to see Anivia being played in this game. Yeah, absolutely, and I like the combination between Anivia as well as Sejuani. If you get Sejuani, it's also to lock down multiple targets, which is what Sejuani did. So Wongza did a, landed a very awesome fantastic ultimate. But apart from that, Hasuda is now going to use his ultimate to try and trap up Ziz. Ziz forced to flash away in that bot lane. They're really focusing down that bot lane, trying to get Mana Sheep to just farm up and get a snowball on that Jinx in comparison to the already Triforce built up Ziz. But, so you got the Glacial Prison plus the Glacial Storm, those two ultimates, if they're with Sejuani's ultimate, just trapping them along a while. 
and you can see also it's just going to do a lot. And in top lane, Luck is doing a lot of damage onto Yuki. Yuki is doing his best to try and sustain it all, but he will fall down. Luck picking up another kill. And it turned out to have been a brutalizer. Now, in times of the jungle, Boxbox has been hit by the Sejuani Ozzy. Awesome. He gets smart as well, and he will fall down. Gizel was in the egg this whole time. Now, they're chasing onto us, but a fantastic stun coming out from Gizel. Asuda will be able to get away to due to the fact that he did flag and drag to safety. But the playstyle from Sejuani and Anivia just able to blow up any target they see fit. Yeah, well, I mean. That was a fantastic stun, but an even better flag and drag. You cannot beat a good flag and drag. And now, it looks like that's something trying to happen down in this bot lane. It's like, they're kind of going, oh, we're going to engage on you, and they kind of not really have to And they did, they did manage to land a great defense on the meta ship. Ziz will pick up that kill, but Kuki coming in with the ultimate. He charges into Possible, so he will be able to fight off to Possible. Meanwhile, Crayola is distracting Ziz, gets locked him up, allowing Kuki to pick up the double kill, so it was a very good teleport. Coming out from Kuki, the teleport into the Onslaught Charge, I believe, or Unstoppable Charge, whatever that Sun Ultimate is, he just simply is unstoppable in that in that retrospect. So he's picked himself up a double kill, 3-4-2, and Carbon Tax pick up their second tower of the game. Yeah, doing a really, really nice job on those towers. Um, they, they are only one tower ahead, but... Just remember that every one tower ahead you are, that's like another 1,000 gold ahead you are. And that's that has put them almost equal at the moment. Now I'm getting a bit pissed off going down the mid lane. Uh, just really getting really happy. angry. Like, I can't believe we lost the tower. Rawr, and just goes into Mega Knight yelling at everybody. Yeah, just rawr, rawr, I'm not happy with my towers. <laughs> yeah, and now he's going to take all his anger out on this board. Unless he gets hit by flame troubles, no it doesn't, but it's gonna be a shooter coming around, he slowed down a little bit, he took a lot of damage from Gizel! He just got blown up instantly, that is Jarvan not tanky! He just can get blown yeah. up instantaneously, and we mentioned this earlier. Wow, the damage from Gizel is something they shouldn't really underestimate, and Nivea doing so much work there with that frostbite, I think it does increase damage if they're chilled and whatnot, and we're seeing both teams Chilling around in the mid lane, maybe trying to look for a fight. Wongza does have the ultimate, and it did use a charge, but it does have the ultimate if they want to. But it's Crayola who leads the charge, he's going to zone them away. And, wow, Hasuda needs to get some magic resistance up in, in his build. Yeah, he just needed to get a lot more resistance as early. Picking up that Brutalizer and going for the Warrior enchantment seemed like a really, really poor choice, because... It's just, it's Jarvan, and if he does still have a decent amount of damage, and he is able to give his allies um, bonus attack speed from his um, his flag that he can jump on the ground. So, didn't need the extra damage, and just the fact that he didn't build that is now he's fallen behind. He's zero for four with five assists, and he's just done. Look, just straight up again. Melted by Sejuani, who is playing as a tank, so yeah, he is just taking ridiculous amount of damage at the moment, and it would be warranted to pick up some kind of magic. It's just any eye of it all would help him right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be reliant on Kuki to become the main tank for their team, and a lot of signs tend to build tanky Sion with maybe an exception of one or two damage items. I've rarely seen uh, non-tank Sions being played at all. So it probably would allow Hasuda to go that kind of warrior fighter build, where he can go for a bit of damage if he was able to get a lot of kills and a lot of snowball generated for his team. But he, he's he's behind. He's even getting one v one by Sejuani, who's only got one realistically damage item, and that's just the Mag Magus um, the Magus enchantment onto the chilling, uh, I believe it's Stalker's blade. So he's not really. So Joy's not really yeah. even doing that much damage, he can still get 1v1, and already Hyper's doing half of the suitor's health, so he has to, he's forced to go tank in, I kind of like where he's trying to go, he's going for, I believe, a Locket of Iron Solari, which could be quite beneficial for his team, if, if you agree on that item choice. Mm. Yeah, it'd be very, very beneficial for the rest of his team, especially considering there is a lot of magic damage on the, um, on team Volk right now. 
Um, even Nah deals a fair amount of magic uh, damage. So um, it looks like they've just changed sides for the dragon. It was it was carbon tax on the uh, the outside of the dragon pit. Now they've gone off the inside. Now they're kind of just walking around it again. So they kind of want to do dragon, but it's taking them a lot of time to uh, get back to it. Yeah, absolutely. All the ultimates are up for carbon tax. Dragon has just started. It does not get stolen away. The fight is now on a very good Nara ultimate, boxing up three of carbon tax. Metaship is in the back line, trying to do a lot of damage as possible, but in fact he gets flashed on by Luck. Luck is trying to stand him up. Kick Kuki, Kuki gets the pill for his ADC, he's able to, but a great flash from Metaship, dodging the death sentence. Even though four of his members have fallen, Team Volker are the ones who take the lead of this team fight. They secure the dragon, they get four for two. Team Volker, definitely in the driver's seat for this game right now. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they were just... They almost pulled up that Wombo Combo. It was it was pretty much their Wombo Combo. It was a little bit sloppy, but just the fact that uh, the that Volta were just able to avoid a lot of that damage and just stay out of range. So a little bit too late on the Zig Bomb and maybe just a bit too off with the, uh, the Javanol. Scion died really quickly in that fight, so um, a lot of things went down that didn't go in advantage uh, of Carbon Tax. So maybe next team fight or next um, time they go and try and do that um, dragon, maybe they'll be able to get some kind of uh, some kind of more team cooperation going down and, and be able to take that dragon and possibly even get an ace or a positive trade out of that. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, we can't also forget how influential Nar is as a champion. We've seen many times that Nar ultimate is able to turn fights, and in that team fight specifically, it was a very well timed Nar ultimate. Javin went in for the Cataclysm, and Nar's just like, alright, fine. I'm gonna knock you, Sion, and also your Leona all into your Cataclysm. That's fine by me. It's terrain, and I love it. And it was able to lock up three. Well, by Sejuani's ultimate and also Corky free reign, like just the lockdown provided by Team Volker in terms of counter initiation is a lot. Now Crayola is going to be the next target. He gets locked up as well, and he will fall down. Give him his his killing spree, his fourth kill of the game. And despite lots of effort trying to deny the Corky's snowball in that early game in the Lenny phase, Team Volker was just able through team fights able to get Corky those kills. And now he's got himself the Infinity Edge as his second item. Which is, I guess... Yeah, kind of... once Corky picks up an Infinity Edge, he gets really scary. Especially because he can just keep rallying off his ultimate. And with enough mana, he can just keep shooting and keep getting that Trinity force up on almost every auto attack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now we're seeing the engagement that came from Wongza, so he did land on Sting's fire effectively. Ziz was able to pick up that kill, now got himself a double kill. So the damage potential, the lockdown from Team Volker, they, they don't even care about towers. It's like... Screw it guys, you've got one tower which is going to dive in between those two towers. Kuki doing his best, he's able to lock up Luke for a little bit. Boxbox trying to do his best to get a lot of damage. Ziz and Oswald coming out from the side. It's Ziz who picks up one kill. Now turning his sights onto Crayola. Crayola is quite low, Kuki does stun him up though. So Crayola will be able to live, will the red buff be enough? No, he lives with barely sliver of health himself. And that's another three or four for one exchange. That was a three for one. Exchange, yeah. So Team Volker yeah, just coming yeah. ahead in every single fight right now. They are, and it's just because, like, it, it's not even the fact that they're playing really, really well. It's just a, a really big, I want to just blame it on a really big lack of communication on um, Carbon Tax right now. Because it seems like they're not grouped up and they're not working together. Like, even right now. Jarvan's going down to the bottom. He is clearing wards, I'll, I'll give him that. But just right now, I mean, Sion's going up top lane. Jarvan's clearing out jungle. Leona and Jinx are up in the mid lane. Zeke's still coming out the So if a team fight were to erupt anytime soon, then it would definitely go in favor in side. And it looks like it is right now because just a bit of damage from that is coming out. Yeah, the ghost has been used by Boxbox. Magic's also been locked up. He gets Wolfie forced to use his ill. Is as soon as now leading the charge, tanking up first team as best as possible. Unfortunately, though, he's not able to tank much. It's Luck who's now leading the charge. He's in Megana form. Won't be able to use his ultimate to stun up Hasuda. 
but throws out a ball so just get out of my jungle this is mine now and the rest of his team are working onto that middle tier 2 turret something very interesting i just saw with um that nah cause normally his um boulder will hit a piece of terrain and uh slam into that or like uh, any minion monster champion or a piece of terrain but i didn't know that he could get close enough to a piece of terrain and actually throw his boulder straight through it so huh. that's quite an interesting uh thing is um managed to do out there i don't know how thick the terrain Actually, um, uh, how thin it actually has to be for his bolt to be able to pass through it, but um, quite interesting. Did you know about that? Uh, well, actually, I didn't even know that. that. And now that I think about it, that's actually really interesting how he threw the boulder through terrain. Maybe it's like the whole you can't jump through certain terrains, or like, like for instance, with Nidalee, you can't pounce over certain terrains due to the width of it or the size of it. And I guess maybe that could be just the terrain mathematics mm. and the physics behind that, or he simply was just like. I don't give a crap, I'm just throwing it anyway. I defy physics. I defy this mathematics. What is this science? I'm Megana, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I'm that sounds a boulder and I don't care. Yeah, I just wanna throw a boulder and I don't care. We see the dragon is winding up in eight seconds and already team Volker already on the scene preparing for that dragon. They both teams have respectively one dragon stack, so that's the increase in AD and AP. Carbon tanks are also on the scene, they're not gonna give this up without a fight. Kuki's leading the charge, him and Krayo leading the charge. For that, Gizel with a really well placed wall is delaying it though for the rest of the team to work on that dragon. The dragon's quite low and that will be secured as soon as it's a bit too late to the party. We will not be able to slam. So smite that. Now it's up to Luke. He goes into the back line of the team. They took quite well to zone him. It's Wonka as well who dived in so deep. The CC coming out from Team Volker is quite enough, allowing the rest of the team to do a lot of damage. The only loose is. But they, all, but they managed to take three, in fact, four of the enemy team. But Metasheep is still alive. He's actually got a double kill for himself. He's, he could be able to turn this fight if he's able to. Kuki in the afterlife trying to bench his team, but no. And that's another four for two exchange for Team Volker. Yeah, they are just not doing very... It may even be a five. No. And no. Nevia. Ashamed of you, Nevia. Damn but, it, Gazelle. Yeah. Why can't you be more like Luke? Luck. Luke. Come on. Yeah. It's the the yeah. five physics. Just absolute crazy, um, crazy team fight right there. It was. I don't know what they're, they're, they're even thinking right now. Well, um, carbon tax, they're just not communicating well with each other. Oh, space gates. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, that is a new thing. That, that has been yeah. a new addition to the. I got added to the time, uh, in the, in the recent. Time. So base gates, they're awesome. We did talk about them at the start with, uh, in terms of, um, what's her face, Rex Knight. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, carbon tax, like, or what's going on with them at the moment because they just not work well and it's just losing their a lot of gold. It yeah. may be the fact that um, that Volca are playing better, but. I feel like for them to have won almost every single one of the games, or just on all of the games that they actually played, it's just, they it seem to be not coming to the game right now, and it's just, they're not grouped up. And Sion, now, going off by himself, and he's going to get caught out. Yeah, so he gets hit, hooked by the death sentence, but also a really well placed wall coming out from Gizal to just lock him up. He's forcing Kuki the ultimate away to safety. They do lose that bottom tier 2 turret. But very smart call coming from Carbon Tax. They're hitting onto the in Baron for themselves. They're allowing Kuki to try and do the best he can to deny this pu um, this push coming out from Volker. Will the trade actually be worth it? Zeke was sent back. Box box trying his best to also delay the push as well. Use his ultimate. Baron has been taken, but it's in the price of it's been taken. The inhibitor. Sorry, Volker do take the inhibitor as compensation for losing the Baron. B Baron best inhibitor. Uh, granted, I guess in Season 4 it would have been worth it for Baron, but now a really sneaky play coming in for Volker. They're able to use all the little Wombo combo coming out with the stun and the CC just chaining everybody up. This goes so deep. He falls so. It was a really unnecessary call, a weird call from Ziz. They just Valkyrie over the wall to try and get a sneaky kill on the Minishim. So he falls well. It's a two for one exchange. Despite Baron going to carbon tax, 
it was all Team Volga coordinated into that brush trying to organize a fanatic like kill gank siege type assassination thing. And I yeah. guess it kind of worked out. In terms of inhibitor versus Baron, I do want to say that uh, Baron charge minions are actually stronger than super minions. So, and they do a lot of damage, especially the siege minions, where they do have like a twitch ultimate type thing where they can hit the towers outside of tower. Lane. So, why it is a lot stronger uh, for them to pick up the, uh, the Baron. Now, the fact that their base is broken and they have not even passed through the inner towers in terms of um, carbon tax. So, while Baron's not is incredibly strong, and I would actually ask that it is stronger than when it was in season 4, what's going to happen between the Nibiru? Yeah, absolutely. So, a little fight yeah. going on between Gazelle as well as Medship, but Crayola coming in to assist his ADC like every support should do. That pops the egg for Gazelle and he will fall down, giving Medship. The shutdown gold, so not just any form of gold, that's an extra 500 for his pockets and his troubles. He's gone the Infinity Edge, he's gone the Phantom Dancer, which is, I guess with the changes to Phantom Dancer and Infinity Edge, I wouldn't be surprised seeing more Phantom Dancer builds. Uh, like, with your thoughts, like the change, adding more crit chance to the Phantom Dancer. Yeah, but it does somewhat, because Infinity Edge was such a strong item to pick up first off. Almost any AD carry at all. So now it does somewhat entice uh, more people to go and pick up the Bloodthirster instead of um, going straight to the Infinity Edge first up, or even picking up the Infinity Edge a little bit later on because it does give that 250% um, on the crit damage. So it does make your critical hits a fair amount stronger. And. Um, and, and also in terms of adding the crit chance onto Phantom Dancer instead of something like Static Shiv. I mean, I have been seeing a lot of Static Shiv as well come out, like, especially in terms of, like, Shaka or even just other AD characters like Lucian. So, um, putting it onto Phantom Dancer also encourages more people to go for the uh, Phantom Dancer instead of picking up the Shiv because there are, like, um, statistics on each one where they, they do have, like, their little advantage. It comes Yeah, they engage onto Gazelle, but a very well placed Lantern. as allows the Anivia to fly to safety, but a fantastic ultimate coming up from Luck. Mox up four members of Carbon Tax. Now here comes Wongsa from behind. He does have the ultimate if he chooses to. But he goes on to Box Rock. Box Rock falls down. Minishim, the only one left for Carbon Tax. He's trying his best. He's able to avenge his own death. Taking Ziz down with him to the grave. But that is an ace for only four members. For Team Volka, if only Wongzu was there earlier, he could have probably turned the fight. Yeah, that is all he needed. But um, Wongzu right now playing Suzwani, the only one on the map right now will be taken out of that inner tower and possibly risking his life to take a bit of damage on inhibitor. But no. okay, it looks like he may actually go for the dragon because he is really tanky and he does have um. A lot of magic damage right now, so he is actually going for that um, magic damage style Sejuani, and I would argue that it's working. It's it's really working, and um, even though he doesn't have many deaths, I mean he seems to be dying the least in this game, especially just uh, being the last one alive right there. Yeah, absolutely. The ultimate from Wangza from Sejuani, that glacial prison is just doing so much damage. It's able to blow off the squishies. That is made of sheep as well as box box. So they're taken by surprise by the sheer damage that Wongza is providing for his team. And it makes sense. Like, I mean, like he's still tanky because that's just that Juan is naturally tanky. Plus, he has sort of some resistances coming out from his items. Some fires, you know, armor health. Leandre's health. A business set the magic defense. It's not like he's completely gone AP Sedge. He's still got those tank like. More bruisery Sedge, I feel. AP bruisery Sedge. But Crayola has been hit by the stun coming up from Grizzell. He's actually taking down the half health. That is the Glacial Storm also working, clearing up those minions. The Nivea pick, I'm, I've, we've loved this. We highlighted it back in Champions League and how we're both 
so I'm big fans of the Nivea pick and it's working. Like, I'm I'm so proud that it's working in this matchup for now. Giselle doing a lot of damage. But Hasuda himself, he's finally got some form of resistance. He's got the Banshee's go, he's got the Hextry thing. He's actually also put the Warden's Mail. Hakuki somehow was dragged through the wall. I don't know if that's even possible. Who cares? Physics doesn't even make sense in this game. Luck on Nai proved that and so does Kuki. But it was quite hilarious. The Sulfur coming out. Coming up from Crowola, that is coming out initiating the fight. They are able to get a three man cataclysm. A lot of people have been locked up. Zach Buck locks himself one kill. Luck is in the back line for Carmen Tax. He's trying his best to distract as much as possible, but he will fall. Meta Chief is still alive. Crayola has gone back on the Z's. He's locking him up. That's a so far one for one exchange. This is one for two exchange in favor of Team Volka. Box Box is quite low. Ziz, he's in the lead. He's in. He's a man. He's a, got himself a triple kill. And I'm a loss of words of what just occurred. <laughs> Ziz picks himself a triple kill. That's an inhibitor for Team Volker. And if they're in just the driver's seat. They're in the commanding lead. It is their game to lose? In fact, that's a surrender vote. Coming out from Carbon Tax right there. Team Volker will take game one of this best of three series. Ah, oh, man. That was a perfect Wombo combo up there right at the end of the game. But it's just they hit the Wombo combo perfectly. But... They didn't have anything at all to follow up because they are missing such a great amount of gold. Right now sitting on 10,000. And it's just, they didn't have the damage to be able to follow up and be able to, to go through with that Wombo combo. So yeah, it's like they could have blasted them down, but it's just everyone is just a little bit too tanky because Anivia sitting at the end of the game with the Rod of Ages and it just everyone in the game has gotten some form of tanky items just to be able to withstand that force of the wombo combo that they, uh, they can put out. So, really well played there, the game. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and I would have to highlight, I feel, if anything, if anyone was like, I guess the MVP for that game, I personally would feel it's the Nah because he was able to get those really, he, his ultimates turned a lot of the fights. There, every time Jarvan tried to go in, Hasuda tried to go in with Jarvan the Cataclysm and also Kuki with the Scion, they tried to engage, they tried to get that wombo combo, Z Luck, who was playing the Nah, simply just dived into the back line. I was like, again, I don't care. Throw what you have at me. I'm just going to throw all of these at the wall and stun you for days. I'm no, that's what I do. And that's that's what he did as well. And he was able to turn a lot of fights. And I personally felt that it was Luck who deserved MVP of that game, first game. Uh, I'm not sure about you, though, Harry. What, who do you reckon kind of deserved that for game one? And I feel it's probably going towards his internet because it just, I think it just died. Again, anyway guys, we'll be back shortly with about a few minute break while we sort up game two and try to get everybody into the lobby as well. So don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to be a five minute break. So again, don't go anywhere. Relax, have fun, get a drink. We'll be back with you shortly.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Arclight Gaming Round Robin. If you're just joining us, you've missed an incredible game so far already where Team Volker were able to take Game 1 against their counterparts Carbon Tax. Again, both teams haven't technically lost a round so far, only had a bit of a hiatus here and there. But an incredible Game 1 went to Team Volker's pocket, so they're already 1-0 up in his best of 3 series and in Busy Man. We were happy with the Anivia pick, and I love that. I really love the Anivia pick. Uh, first off, I'm not in busy. <laughs> oh my gosh! I messed it up! I, I, re I, I retire. Harry! I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still oh. hyped up for Monday, because Monday was a really long day. Oh, oh. man. Well, um... Harry. Harry, Anivia. I'm sorry. I love Anivia. You should be sorry. <laughs> Please don't file for divorce. Ziggs, gone. Straight up. Going out of box box tents. Yeah, so again, for those who are just joining us, this is round six of the Arc Light Gaming Round Robin. Harry, I'm truly sorry. Oh, it's the heat's <laughs> getting to me now. And such an incredible game beforehand. Ziggs has been banned away from box box. And for those who don't know who is box box, the mid laner for Carbon Tax, unfortunately, he's using, I think it's Korean or Chinese uh, letters or names. And as such, I can't really see them. So they look like boxes to me. So we're calling it box box for tonight. And the Ziggs was banned away from him, but the Anivia was banned away from Gizel, and we loved Anivia. It was really fun to see her being picked up, and she's been banned away. She has, which makes me sad. Yeah, but absolutely. it makes me happy that uh, LeBlanc's gone, because no one likes LeBlanc. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still hoping for a cannon pick to come out eventually. I love that little Pikachu, and I'm hoping to see him. Aureli being banned away from Carbon Tax as well, probably still a target ban towards Luck. And we got to highlight Luck in terms of last game. To me, he was the MVP for first game. His play on oh, Nar yeah. was just absolutely marvelous. He, like the whole time, he just like, alright, his team's being engaged on, but he'll be like, I don't care, I can just turn fights around with my Nar ultimate. So, we could see a Nar ban coming out from Carbon Tax as a respect ban towards Luck. He was able to cause so much pain and havoc towards the back line of Carbon Tax. Lissandra, again, being banned away from Team Volker. Don't want to deal with that double AP like comp that a lot of OCE teams have been running as our meta. And Annie being banned away, that was, I th Carbon Tax did that in game one. Banned again a second time, not sure why, maybe just don't want to deal with an Annie at all. But this leaves Nar open if they don't want to first pick it. But also Rek'Sai is still left open, Harry. Thoughts on that Rek'Sai? It is still left open. and. I would be very happy to see a Rek'Sai because she is still really, really strong even though she did get a nerf because of those base gates. So, while like it's not really that big of an impact, the uh, the implementing of the base gate, but Rek'Sai is still a really, really powerful champion and she's still able to get a lot of... Um, of like, she can just clear a camp and then borrow underground and get all of her health back up again. And it really helps when she's in fight because she can just borrow run away for a bit and then come straight back in <laughs> as, as the Jarvan straight up. Yeah, she absolutely. just go straight back in it and, and knock him up and, and kill him a bit more. So, she's able to still do a lot of extra damage, so it'd be nice to see a Rek'Sai coming out here. Yeah, we, we'll be on to the likes of Karma Tax to see if they want to pull out a Rek'Sai jungle. And speaking yeah. of Rek'Sai, it is being hovered right now. L Jarvan was picked up first pick by Team Volker. In the previous game, it was Gar Carbon Tax who first picked that Jarvan. And a Janna, which was also banned away by, I believe, Carbon Tax in previous game. So they let that through, and then now they should be able to secure that. And that's actually a very good pickup from Carbon Tax. Janna, Beast in that bot lane. Rek'Sai, Beast in that jungle. Both very solid picks. They've definitely started to get a better pick and ban phase coming to game two. What don't you think they're Harry? Oh, Jana. No! Or not! They just go that back. Is so rude. Let Crayola go back on top of Leona. He did land some pretty good solar flares, though. You have to admit there. Ah, uh, oh! Oh! Do they know how much I love Jana? Have they been watching the, the BBS um, streams or something? Because uh, Jana is my favorite. And they just. If they just do this again and just. Hold on to Jana for the, until the last second and just swap out to something like Lulu or something. I tell you, right now I'm, I'm going to be very mad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, like I mean, 
it's the same thing. They were hovering over Shaker, and I kind of wanted Shaker to be picked up because he's pretty cool. I mean, I'm Mr. Jester, Shaker, get it, Demonic Jester. It worked, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Not yeah. So it works. <laughs> and I, 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 I actually like the Shaker. I kind of play him a lot. He's fun to play. But what I want to highlight now, so in the previous game, we talked about the Sejuani versus the Jarvan, the two different junglers, what they can provide for the team. Jarvan tried to gank early, got a bit of kills, but then the Sejuani just came around and just demolished. Now you've got Rek'Sai versus the Jarvan. What, what can they provide? Like, how will this matchup go in terms of Rek'Sai v Jarvan in that jungle? Well, it all depends if Luck can build tanky. <laughs> if he doesn't go off and do a Hasuda and just go full damage straight up in the, at the start of the game and just try and gank lanes when you're really, really squishy, um, Jarvan can be a real beast in the game. If he gets tanky, because he already does have that um, percentage damage on his uh, passive when he uh, strikes an enemy the first time, and he does um, give that uh, armor and attack speed to his all of his allies, which will really help Nar and whatever AD carry they decide to pull out. So um, Jarvan can just full tank, and if he does, if he gets really tanky in the start of the game, and if he gets really fed, then he will be able to beat Rek'Sai. But at the same time, Rek'Sai is still incredibly powerful, and she is going to be able to um, do a lot of invading, which is going to be something that would be happening if this is Java and Jungle and not in the top lane. Oh my god, a pick there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You probably mix up the players. It's Wong's. I'll hopefully be playing that Java and Jungle, unless it's a turnaround, a weird strategy where Java goes in the top lane. Or maybe, please, please, Shaco lock in for Shaco jungle, Java in mid. I would be happy. Um, maybe. Honest, I, I, would, I, I would literally just jump for joy if this happens. Maybe but even Java support. No, no, no they're going, no. sending the Java back in the jungle. And it's, like you said, it depends on how well they can gank. Java, we kept highlighting how. Depending on how he builds, so depending on how what Wongza builds, and that if it's going to be Java jungle, which is most likely, unless again random strategy, Nar in the jungle. But after Lux's performance of Nar previous game, I doubt they want to actually pull out some weird strategy like that. But depending yeah. on what Wongza builds, and we saw in the previous game, Hasuda built the Java, and he went for that early Warriors enchantment, and he just got blown up instantly. It, Java, and we kept mentioning this. All right, granted, he's a beast of a jungler. If he gets some damage items and is able to get those early ganks off, he can just shred through people, blow them up, get Snowball going. But he's still very squishy if he doesn't build any tanky items. And we saw that in the previous game. Hasuda just got blown up left, right, center every single time. And it was just quite unfortunate for him right there. I have to also, we've got to highlight, I guess, in the bot lane, it's going to be a different matchup in the previous one. It was between the vein, and, uh, sorry, it was between... Jinx versus Corky. Medship on Jinx, Corky on for Ziz. Now it's going to be Graves against Vayne. Thoughts on that kind of matchup? It's it can't really go either way unless Vayne is really. Oh, that was a last second pick up there. Hey, what's going on? Wait. Oh, maybe it was one of those times where that thing happens. With yeah, this stuff. apparently Crayola died or DC'd yeah so he DC'd so that was uh, I guess we got to remake the whole pick and ban phase and it was left down to what was the last pick coming up from a carbon it tax the it, could, it could be a Alistar and whatnot, but it, it, it really does depend but I'm kind of I'm interested to see how this matchup goes we're seeing Ari being picked up by Boxbox in previous game played Ziggs and now he's uh, playing the Ari, see how that's going to go up against, I believe, the Twisted Fate. So Twisted Fate, we haven't seen much of, I guess, in this season or in the previous season. So we had an Anivia mid... Yeah, <laughs> they're trying to get the Anivia. Same picks and bands. Sorry, guys, about that. Oh, so it pronounces Luke. We do apologize, <laughs> so it's Luke. It's it's not luck, it's Luke. So. Fine. Luke, Luke, it's it's Luke for um, in that top lane. So we're expecting a similar pick and ban phase. So that was, I believe, Nara in the top lane for Luke. Wong's over with the Jarvan. 
the Twisted Fate coming up for Gazelle, Ziz with Graves, and the Jana for Posmil. Very interesting lineup. And on the opposite side, we had Kuki. I don't think they picked a top laner yet. I think that was the final pick was the Lee owner. Uh, sorry, the final pick was the bot lane, uh, the top lane pick. So we're just seeing the same pick and band basically coming up from both teams. We already know what Team Volker are running, what their comp, lane, comp is going to be. And if only they could take, take Darius, that'd be funny. But we'll see what they got prepared. And they're thinking of the Rumble, and it's going to be the Rumble for Kuki. Okay. That is, it's it's nice. We did see a rumble in one of the uh, much earlier games there. So um, uh, here we go. Oh, I wonder, is it going to be Nar AD carry or is it going to be Grace AD carry? Oh, they're at it again. They're doing it again. So. I, I, it would be funny if it, it's if Nar ADC. Like I mean, it'll be like the funniest thing, or even Twisted Fate. Like all these trolley things. But we, we know for sure what this comp will be like. And so you got the matchups Twisted Fate versus Ari, Graves versus Vayne. Normally, how do, th how do these matchups go, especially in that mid lane? We both kind of like to roam a lot, especially when they hit that level 6. Yeah, well, I mean, Twisted Fate is going to be able to get off a lot of ganks, especially with his ultimate, where he can just go zap straight in a different lane. And, um, and versing Ari, he is going to have the upper hand right there, just because Ari really relies on uh, a lot of her movement speed, and I'm not sure if the um, the patch has come out yet, or if it's still on PVE with the um, when Ari throws out her orb of perception, that she gets bonus movement speed. That may just be on the PVE. I think it is. Yeah, I, if if that if that was true, she gains movement speed from orb of deception. I th I don't know. I, I think that's gonna be kind of strong. That'll be really really strong to face. Like, yeah, so hey so guys, I've got happening. infinite mobility with Spirit Rush, but guess what? If I throw Q at your face, I can run faster. Yeah, so another thing, like, a few other things that are happening to Ari, like she's getting her overall damage on all of her abilities slightly increased, but the thing with her charm, the extra damage that she deals has been removed. So it seems like they're trying to get rid of all this uh, percentage bonus magic damage getting, uh, getting rid of, like with the DFG and the charm. Uh, bonus damage with Ari's charm, so I think that's just still sitting on the PBE right now. But um, yeah, because Ari relies really, really heavily on that uh, mobility, Twisted Fate is going to have a really big advantage if he can pull out those yellow cards quick enough. So um, once he pulls out that yellow card and he hits Ari in the face with one, stuns her, she can't go anywhere, and he can just absolutely destroy her with the rest of his um, with the rest of his combo. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully he isn't the Reginald for the Team Volker and just pulls out random blue cards randomly. So hopefully he gets those gold gold cards. And I've, I've always loved Twisted Fate. The ability of Twisted Fate, he's a very... I personally feel, and you can prove me wrong here, please do if you can. I feel like Twisted Fate is relevant in all phases of the game. In early phase he can zone out. In mid game, if he doesn't have the damage, he's able to chain the gold cards consistently. And in late game, he's just able to blow up people. So, I don't know. To me, I've always thought Twisted Fate was relevant, but it's reliant on the Twisted Fate player to make him, like, to make him solid in all phases of the game. If yeah, I well, I mean, what, like, even, like, just before he hits level 6, just because that yellow card, like, the whole time you're sitting in lane, just the thought of that yellow card hitting you and him being able to get a few auto attacks with that um, bonus damage from his W and throwing out the three cards, hitting you automatically, just the threat of that yellow card puts so much pressure. And then even like, as soon as he hits level 6, he has so much map pressure that it's just everyone in their lane is not going to overextend because they're just going to be too scared of a twisted fate coming straight down and, and jumping onto you. Like, that, his ultimate is so, so powerful, and not just because it teleports in somewhere. Like, I'd say the strongest thing about it would be the vision that it grants. Like, you can yeah. see if the enemy team's sitting on Baron, or if they're sitting on Dragon, or if they just sit inside their base in the shop, and you're like, okay, hello, let's go do Baron. Hey, it's a free Dragon, guys. They're just chilling in base. Why not? It'll be pretty good. Also, I think it'll be pretty good to see where that wreck site is. Does it reveal her tunnels? Would it reveal her tunnels? No. Um, 
if someone is standing near a tunnel and it reveals it, then yes. But because it only reveals uh, enemy champions, it doesn't reveal uh, okay. the tunnels because right. technically they're minions. Yeah, no, that's sweet. That, that, that's pretty awesome. And also, he's able to follow up Ari if she goes for those level ro six plus or level post six roams, try and get those early kills and whatnot. So Twisted Fate, one of my most favorite champions, just able to be all over the map whenever he feels like it. Thanks to that ultimate. I want to also highlight, I like the Jarvan being picked up by Wongsa, the Nar Jarvan combo, that cataclysm into the Nar ultimate. It meshes well, so well, it's so, like, it just, it's just a like mesh, it meshes together as if, like, the best synergy, I feel. And guys, we are underway for game two of this best of three between Team Volker and Carbon Tax. If you're just <laughs> joining us, if for some odd reason you decide to wake up to, right now and decide to watch us fast stream, good Fantastic, but you missed out game one. You actually missed an incredible game where Team Volker took game one in quite a not, I wouldn't say convincing fashion. They were just a lot more in the control and lead. But now it's up to Carbon Tax if they can avenge themselves. And they've got the Rek'Sai, they've got a Rumble. I kind of like their team comp. But Lu Lu sorry, Luke is playing the Nara again and he was monumental previous game. Yeah, I mean... I do like what they've done, because last game they sat there, <laughs> that war's probably just seen them all. <laughs> that, um, the, uh, they just saw last game that when Jarvan altered them, all right, uh, they were able to just set off spawn. that nah, um, well, the nah, and just stun everyone inside that. So they're just going to use that to their advantage and just go, hey, you used the Jarvan last game, I guess this time we're going to take it. Really nice ward placement from, um, from uh, Carbon Tax there, really um, yeah, from from Carbon Tax, prevented a massive um, desolation uh, coming straight up from them. Oh yeah, that the ward that was placed on the river that was able to scout out and spot Team Volker running in. I do also like the deep wards coming out from Team Volker. I mean, I guess it it provides vision on where the jungle will start and. <laughs> When a jungler knows that information, they're able to do quite a lot of things. Wouldn't you agree there, Harry? I... I... I guess not. Hello. Anyway, guys... <laughs> it looks as though both junglers are starting onto the Krugs. Jarvan will get the leash from the bot lane. You know, Rek'Sai in the top lane will get assistance thanks to that rumble. A Luke on that now is just keeping an eye out for his blue buff, trying to make sure that's safe. The lane-up matchup between Graves and the uh, Graves Jana versus Bane Leona, it's I don't know, I, I think he'd be most likely go into pockets of Graves and Jana, only because of that whole buckshot and the Eye of the Storm, which is a shield from Jana, which grants AD into the buckshot. Like what do you reckon how do you reckon the bot lane will go between these two uh well, bat, bot lane matchups? Um well I'm kind of sitting, putting my bet onto Vayne right now because he did play a really, really nice Jinx last game, so I do have there the gold card. Yep, in <laughs> that mid lane, Box Box gets hit by the gold card, hasn't used Flash just yet, it's Wongza with the chain. In fact, the charm loves line, as soon as coming in for the counter gank, Wongza will fall down, giving Box Box first blood, now the chase is onto Gazelle. This is unlike game one, it's been turned around. Gazelle is trying to use the gold card, he will be able to get away, and that's gonna be first blood. For Box Box, I think the same thing happened in previous game. Box Box got first blood, but it was the counter gank from Asuda saying, "Fine, you counter gank last game, I can counter gank better," and giving Box Box the first blood. Yeah, especially with the early power of Rek'Sai. I mean, Rek'Sai is is pretty much uh, prevalent throughout the entire game, so it's one of those things. Like, um, I was just talking about before, like, um, Meta Sheep played a really really nice Vayne last game, so I feel like he does have. The, the mechanics in order. To... Oh, very low there, Twisted Fate. Yeah, yeah so um, he does have the mechanics to um, to be able to dodge when when Jarvan, what what Jarvan when um, Graves is about to use his ultimate or his buckshot just to get a lot of that extra damage. So Vayne does have that ability in order to to escape those really really strong things with um, with Graves and um, so I. Oh, this is good in the mid lane, yeah? Yeah, Box Box overstanding his reach. We get mocked up on the flag and drag. It's Wongzo who will avenge his previous death, giving Gizel that kill. 
a lot of mid laners are like, probably just keep the games in place towards. I mean, that was barely, a, basically a very simple cake coming out from Wongza. I felt Boxbox overstayed his welcome there and just gave an unnecessary kill towards Gazelle on that Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate, when he does generate some items, he's still, like, he does blow people up if he does have. And bless this soul, Diff G will be taken away, I believe. I think it's next patch. But I always built DFG on Twisted Fate because it's just a lot hilarious. It's really hilarious. You just press DFG gold card and then wild cards. And it just does so much damage. But yeah. Twisted Fate has that capability to just blow someone up, especially when it gets that Lich Bane. And so far it's got the crystal, the sapphire crystal and amplifying tome. Do you reckon that's gonna go for an early sheen? I, I really do think that it will because just a, so much of his damage comes from just that first strike on the, on the gold card and it's just going to amplify his damage just that little bit more. Just, it's it's a really small amount because it is just based off his attack damage at the start and he probably would be better off getting some more ability power if he was a different kind of uh, champion but playing Twisted Fate, a lot of that damage is going to come from the poke that he gets on his auto attacks uh, just as they are already. So. I feel like he's going to just rush the hell out of that um, Lich Bane and pick that up first. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I have to point out, coming out from Team Volker and what I actually quite like, is the early ward control coming around the Dragon Pit and along that river. It allows Ziz and Postman to play very aggressive in that bot lane. Like, this whole, the past six minutes, the, tower, the minions have been shoved up, up to Metasheep and Crayola's tower. So they've hardly had enough time to get those Last hit's trying to hit it under tower, and already CS is developing by Ziz. Uh, Granted, not over like 20 CS or anything, but they're able to do quite a good job of zoning out. Like, look at Metasheep's health in comparison to Ziz. Crayol is also in comparison to Posmil. Those ward controls coming out from Team Volker are allowing the bot lane to play super aggressive in that bot lane. I, I feel. Yeah, well, I mean, just, yeah, just the wards. Like, even though they're dying right now, but, um. Oh, he is uh, trying to do a bit of it, but getting blocked with his balls and stuff, so... Tried to do something, yet just wards sitting on, on, uh, on Dragon is giving them a lot of pressure, because they do not want to lose this in this Dragon. And, and Gizelle... Quick, they can't melt. Oh, Gizelle getting hit by that charm, it allowed Fursuda to come through the tunnel for that knock-up. That's going to be another kill going towards the pockets of Carbon Tax. One for the jungler, one for the mid laner. He's definitely having a better performance. Compared to the previous game, Hasuda now with that Rek'Sai compared to the Jarvan. And Jarvan, I don't know, I felt like he hasn't done much in um, Wongza on this game. But then again, in the previous game, he wasn't able to do much until he hit that level 6. And for the counter ganks and whatnot. So I will see Wongza try to do, or try to call the play. Now that he has that character, he has that level badge. We do see Destiny being used up. Not sure where he's going to go. He's actually going to go to mid lane. Does land a gold card onto Box Box without what Wong's up. Box Box does manage to survive, burnt that flash. It was simply a flash being burnt. You know, in the top lane, it was Luke who aggressed onto Kuki. Did take a tower hit for that engagement, though, but Kuki is down below half health. And Luke, playing on his Fable Nah, he's doing a quite a good job in that top lane. Look at Kuki's health, that hyper will hurt. Luke has taken that lead in that top lane. Yeah. He is really just. Oh, I, I hope to God he jumps onto um, Nah, uh, Nah, Rumble right there and, and does a little bit of damage. It's Yordle versus Yordle up there, so. Yeah, and Rek'Sai sensing, yeah. the, sensing the prey. He's going after Luke, but Luke with a very well placed hop does manage to dodge that tunnel engage coming out from Hasuda. So well played by Luke. He's starting to show like he's got control over that Nah pick. It's definitely one of his more comfort roles. And. In game one, again, we gave him away the MVP. He did surely deserve it. He just an outstanding Nar play in that previous game. Turned around a lot of fights by Shuri's presence and that Nar ultimate as well. But I'm, I'm interested to see how will this go, like the Ari. We're starting to see now Box Box is roaming on Ari. Is this a good time to roam for Ari? Well, Pro I mean, it really is the time. It break. probably yeah. is because thanks to Crayola locking down Osmil, Boxbox is able to secure his second kill of the game. That roam wouldn't have happened, wouldn't have gotten the kill had it not been for Crayola. 
And I can see now that the Leona pink in comparison to the John for Crayola though. Whoa, uh, sorry, um, wait, well, it, it does look like they're about to take a dragon right now, and all because of the R is going down there, down to the bottom lane, taking out the, um, taking yeah. out Lost Lane, and here comes the power. Right? Yeah, very good knockoff coming out from Masuda, followed by the charm from Boxbox, now meanwhile in top lane, Luke, did he crest on the Kuki, he's in Mega Nar form, forced to use that Mega Nar ultimate, and not really able to get anything in comparison to the previous game. Luke hasn't actually gotten himself a kill in that top lane. So it's already a different game compared to the first game. Carbon Tax 4 1 up. They've gotten the dragon. Even though they're still evenly in gold. And that's probably due to the farm, that differentiation coming out from the lanes as well as the jungle. 43 28 is a jungle. 69 to 56 is that top lane. 68 to 57. 87 to 65. Team Volker are able to farm up a lot more effectively and efficiently in comparison to carbon tax and that is why the gold is so even. But could that be like a devastating thing, especially with Twisted Fate and that passive? Like if he's able to get a lot of that farm up. Yeah, well I mean if Twisted Fate's able to, to get a lot of that farm, especially with his passive, like where he does get bonus gold, I think it's from one through six, um bonus gold for every minion, which is actually a lot of extra gold. So if he's able to pull up that those minion kills and get up these Oh no, not the Oh, Ghost coming out. Yeah, Gisele did do some ghost, but a very well placed equalizer denies the ghost movement speed. Now Mino in the ball and it's a he does gank that and forcing Cosmil to use the monsoon but managing to simply flash tumbles in. Wong's are missing the flagging drag. That could be devastating. Unfortunately, though, Carbonax simply decided to back away. Happy with the two kills they've gained in that fight, um, in the two skirmishes that occurred. And this is definitely turning out to be a, a more, not one-sided, but it's definitely becoming in more carbon taxes favor. And we're seeing the Morella Nomicon being bought, purchased up for box box, and along those lines. But in comparison to Giselle, he just sat on that sheen. Is it? Would, would you have recommended a Lich Bane? Or would you recommend Wonka to flash away, which he does? He gets hit by the charm as well. And he will fall. Unfortunately, no, he does live. Giselle was able to deter the rest of Carbon Tax away. And a pretty good decision to come from Giselle. Wonka forced force to his flash. He's just not having a good time in that jungle. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like even though Lich Bane does scale off your ability power, um, and, and it, it does rely on having a little bit of ability power before you get it, but the fact that Twisted Fate, he has that blue card that he can just use in lane and get his mana back up, and he's all about bursting people down, not so much about the boat. Oh lord, that also from Red Cloud actually kind of spooked me out, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect down. that. Yeah, so, so he's picking up the, the mana regeneration is, is quite interesting uh, uh, to me because he doesn't really need it. I mean, there's the gold card, there's the burst, that's all he needs to do. Now he can sit back, wait, and use a couple of blue cards on the thing just to get his mana back up. I mean, he doesn't really need to get um, the, uh, the the mana regen that he's picked up. So I would have advised uh, he actually go on the, uh, with the Lich Bane instead of picking up. But, um, yeah. Also, in terms of uh, Marilla Nomicon as well, um, a lot of people are picking that up uh, for mana regen instead of going for the Athenes, which is because of the change where um, it does. Oh, here we go. Here's yeah, Hasuda getting on the possible possible will fall down, giving Boxbox another kill. But Hasuda is taking up a lot of damage, giving Gazelle another kill. Boxbox doing the best he can. Crayola coming for assistance. In fact, Gazelle picks up a double kill. Luke also did teleport in towards that mid lane. Kuki, who's back at base, does have teleport, so he can join in if he needs to. But a two kill in favor of Gazelle. What a turnaround, and all they lost was that support. Yeah. Uh, so. Really, really well done on uh, on their behalf. But um, what I was saying with the um, the Marilla Nomicon, which it does look like Ari is going straight for, it um because it gives the 100% bonus um, 
base mana regeneration instead of the regenerating 2% of your mana per uh, missing thingy. It is much better to get the Athenes once you already have some mana. So, um, it looks like uh, there was Vayne and, and Leona coming down and trying to uh, take out Graves while he's taking it out, but then Jana just appears and they're like, oh, oh no. Oh, we dang can't it. Do it I, can't, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. You have no power here. Ah. Quoting Jana and the guy from World of the Rings. Down in top lane, yeah. Kuki is trying his best to win out in that top lane. He's not that far off in terms of CS. He's only 10 CS behind. But the difference between this game and the previous game was that he hasn't died yet to the Nar. Luke got himself two kills up in that top lane all by himself. Kuki hasn't dropped a single one, despite playing a lot more of a squishier champion in comparison to that Scion pick. So it's quite interesting to see how he'll go going into the mid game and whatnot. Now into the bot lane, Ziz and Pozzle will go aggressive onto Meship. Meship was dropped down to half health, but the cavalry is around the corner. We're seeing his suitor, his setup towards the tri rush that was near the tower, probably tunnel through. But also in that mid lane, Crayola and Box Box. Set their sides up for Gazelle, weren't able to do it since Gazelle simply walked back to tower to safety. And those wild cards actually do a lot of damage. Boxbox has to be able to avoid that. In the top lane, Kuki, just a bit of back and forth trade. And Boxbox, that's gets his by goal guard, he gets blown to pieces! He will fall down instantly, and that's the Twisted Fate Morella Nomicon Sheen build. Actually yeah. working. Yeah, well, it is. Oh, here we go. Here comes the. Uh, yeah, Hasuda and Krayot setting their sights up onto Kizar. He gets locked up long enough for Hasuda to pick up the kill. Now the chase is onto Wu Wongsa. But Pozma will be able to come in and deter them away. Luke also coming. He flashed in for the other, but he missed that ultimate from Na. That's actually going to be quite big. That's also a flash being burnt away from Na. Rumble making his way towards that mid lane. Kuki he does have the equalizer as well as flash. So he's got those summoner spells and the ultimate if needs be. Luke has gone back down to mini Nar form, so this could be a fight in the favor of Carbon Tax. But Team Volker simply decided to back away. Dragon is also up. We've got to keep an eye Dragon on that. Is up. And it looks like they're going straight for it. They're going straight in, chucking down wards. Get ready to do this. And right now, Volker are very spread out. And here's the twist of fate also I was talking about, where, they, where he can just see where everyone is. Yeah, so he ulted in going into that dry brush. The Howling Gales is come up, coming up from Puzzmill. Not even to turn thing because Jarvan is actually nowhere near, but a very well placed equalizer. He landed on two of the squishy targets. Ziz forced to flash away. Boxlock does have two more Spirit Rush charges. So he'll be able to catch up onto Ziz. Ziz will fall down, giving Boxlock his fourth kill of the game. Mino Hasuda picked up the dragon. That's his second dragon stat going towards Carbon Tax's pocket. And definitely a different game in comparison to that first one. Would you agree, Harry? I would. Oh my god, here we go. Wow, Wongsa with the flag and drag into the Cataclysm. Instantly blowing up box box. In fact, also Medici falls down. Possible will be the casualty for Team Volker. But they are able to avenge his life, picking up a kill on the actually Gazelle Fell. So it was Carbon Tax will avenge their fallen comrades in battle and picking up another kill onto Gazelle. 5-4 is that Twisted Fate right there. 4-4 four, four for his counterpart. The Ari on box box, and it's a lot more close to this game. And despite having two dragons up, having five kills lead, the two tower advantage plus the CS advantage in the pockets of Team Volka uh, is what allows them to have that 2k gold. Yeah, they they are really really pushing out the lead at the moment, and it looks like they may win this game for a second time. Even though they don't have leading dragons, they are two dragons behind, which does put them at a really big disadvantage because right now, Carbon Tax can just go, like, send someone up split pushing, probably Rek'Sai with a lot of wave clear and just take out that top tower really, really quickly just because of the 15% uh, bonus damage to towers. That is the right one, is it not? It's the right one, thank god. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing the equalizer coming out from Kuki. That like Gizel has actually managed to drop him down to half health alone with one simple ultimate. But Krell utilizing his ultimate to secure that kill, giving Kuki his second kill of the game. That's a 2 0 2 rumble. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, Ziz and Posmil are shoving up to that tier 2 turret. What all the deception did do a bit of damage on the Posmil, so forcing him to use a potion. 
and Luke is here to join it with the cavalry to hit down onto that tier 2 turret whilst the remaining of Carbon Tax take that top tier 1 so that's their first turret of the game going towards Carbon Tax but they most likely will lose that tier 2 turret unless they're able to do something and Crayola as well as Meshim are here for the help they're heading onto that tower Wong's that dropped down the half out of Luke who took a lot of the tower aggro as well but that tower will fall down giving Team Volker their third tower of the game yeah, but as I was saying just before, setting someone up top to splish foot, and that's exactly what they've done. Rumble just went up and took out the top tower. Now, it does actually look like he's in a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, he will get capitalized, flashing away from the flag and drag, but will not be able to flash away from that cataclysm. In fact, it's the wild cards that picks up the kill, giving Gizel a six kill of the game. But his team have not, uh, uh, will avenge him. They haven't lost hope. They are able to utilize the death that Kuki. Uh, well, basically sacrifice himself for for that tier one turret. Now it's three two turrets in favor of Team Volker still, and it's Luke leading the charge. Just really going so deep on this. It's a knock up meta sheep. Also using iron, but a fantastic song for locking up Luke. He will fall down. The pseudo does fall as well, giving Gizel another kill. And meta sheep, who's down to low half health, so is Crayola and Volker. Let me give him a good charm. It's going to deter Gizel away from that chase, and a one for one exchange. Basically for two teams, no one really coming out in favor from that, but Hasuda and Rek'Sai, they have to start respecting that. Especially once that Triforce has been completed. Don't you reckon they, Harry? Yeah, I mean, once that Triforce is, is done, then Rek'Sai is going to start doing a lot and a lot of damage. But um, what I was getting with before with the, uh, the split push on Rumble is he managed to go off and split push, and he did an Ergot strategy where... He, go, he went up to the top lane and he pushed out and he just stayed there for so long that eventually Volker had to do something about it. So they send three people up in the top lane, which leaves a 2v4 down in the mid lane, which left um, Carbon Tax to just take out that tower really, really easily. So um, it's just really, really little things like that. Just the, the, just the split pushing and just... just just these kind of things that happen in, in these games is just what we're here for right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what difference between a sort of a ranked fives, a more cohesive team in comparison to just the solo queue. Usually people be like, they're just split pushing, but then they'll just back away on their own accord. But then you have teams like Carbon Tax, who are just like, Kuki, mate, don't worry, keep going, we've got your back. If they come up, we'll take a turret. You're basically worth a turret, is what the team is saying. But the decision, oh, he's like even. Totally even. But the decision to remain Kuki up in a top lane, that's a team decision. And that's the difference between something along the arc like Gaming Ground Robin and Solo Queue. Alright, granted, some of these teams, there is like one team that were a bunch of Solo Queue members that came together, and I think that was Bench Reborn. But the difference between them is they actually work together, and we're seeing teams who are granted not up to the top level as Chiefs or Direwolves or Legacy just yet. But they're finally finding their feet, they're finding their foundations. And who knows, maybe with the upcoming Oceanic Open Ladder, we can see some of these teams rise up and challenge the big well-known team. Like, uh, has been hit by the Charm, and that's the obliteration that is Ari. Charm into Death Fire Grass, and are we going to miss that Death Fire Grass? With just the absurd amount of damage it can provide. But Gazelle didn't know what was coming as soon as he got hit by that Charm. Probably only knew Death, and Death alone. They are able to take their top tier 1 tower, so that's the 4th tower of the game going towards Team Volker. But they most likely will miss and lose that tier 2 turret in that mid lane. And potentially, if Carbontax are able to go take the dragon. But a good teleport from Luke, able to deter the rest of Carbontax away. But the ping is on for dragon, and that could be the next objective for the next team fight. Yeah, well, they should really be going for dragon right now, and that's, that's all they really need. They instead of going down to the mid lane because they could see that they were backing off up in that top lane so it's probably just that they are going to go for that time um, that thing, just that extra movement speed uh, to be able to zone during this fight but um they probably should have gone for that dragon because they could see that, that the members of Volk up in the top lane were backing off and, and, and recalling that yeah absolutely lane. We're seeing the dragon being utilized. The equalizer does come out, but a very good man. That was a fantastic initiation coming from Team Volker. The cataclysm into the Mega Nar ultimate was able to lock up four members 
of Carbon Tax, and now Box Box and Cryo are the only last two members. But Box Box will be chased up on it, he will fall down. Whoever gets the kill with the pen, but Box Box said, I will take one with me. He's decided to take Wongzo with him to the grave and to the afterlife. But it's not going to be enough. One for four in exchange for Team Volker. And that was the Nah Jarvan. Coordination, that just cohesive uh, connection between those two champions just working to full effect. Yeah, well, just the ability of being able to create that wall and pushing everyone into it with the knot. It seems like they kind of tried to work with that with like the, the Anivia wall being able to be placed and uh, and Nah knocking them into it, but nothing really seemed to happen. So the Jarvan ultimate seems to really, really be working well with the uh, with this Nah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm to one of those two banned out next game. Yeah, absolutely. If this game does go to game three, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Nah being banned out at least. It's not like in this game, Luke hasn't been like as detrimental or as amazing in comparison to game one, where he was just able to turn fights with that Nah pick. He's still providing though that one ultimate that can potentially turn fights, and that's just happened right there. It worked well. The synergy with the Cataclysm, the Nah ultimate, it just worked so well. It was able to take carbon tax by surprise basically and the only one who was able to actually get away from all that was box because of the spirit rush and whatnot but now they have their sights set up for Crayola he's now entered the den of the demons he's in the jungle of team Volker they will be able to scout him out and take him and basically but what's that what's that phrase to to basically find secure and kill I'm not too sure not sure yeah, it's, I guess, like, Seek, Pray, Destroy? It's not something along those lines, like, seek, Seeking um, one of the Preys in their in their jungle and just taking them out and whatnot. I think it was like a Sniper's term or an Assassin might be thing. It's escaping me right now. But Crayola is down, that's one of their biggest CC from the team of Carbon Tax. The Coglio does provide Solar Flare and the Stun because of the Shield as well. That's a lot gone, and they do lose that top tier 2 turret. 5 to 2 of the turrets, and the early lead that Carbon Tax have is starting to slip through their hands. Slip through yeah, their fingers. Carbon Tax, they're just, right now, they're just in the wrong places at the wrong time. I mean, Rumble is doing a very impressive job of taking out these towers. He, in fact, has almost, uh, no, I think he may have every tower for his team, or at least contributed to every tower for his team. And yeah, um, so, so at least that, that's working well for them, but just the fact that they they walk off towards Baron and walk down the mid lane when Volkers go up and take that top tower and it looks like they're going up there again. Oh no no, that's um that's uh uh carbon tax, not not in Volker. Absolutely. The Twisted Fate, I'm still liking the Twisted Fate. Gazelle, he pulled out the Olivia game one, he's pulled out the Twisted Fate game two. Some mid lane champions which we haven't necessarily seen since season two, like Olivia, season two wasn't really seen since then. Like season three was dominated by the assassins. But what else? It's really refreshing to see these mid lane champions coming back into resurgence. And this, all I can remember from Twisted Fate was Messiah and Twisted Fate. Simply just ulties in, then Sonya is just an absolute bait. It was a monster with that Twisted Fate pick. So, seeing Gazelle picking up those champions, it's it's very refreshing, and hopefully to see more of them later on in the Arc Light Gaming round, Robin. It, it's it's a blessing in disguise to see those champions come out. And he has been playing quite well on them. Like, game one, he was absolutely marvelous on the Nivea. Game two, he's, uh, he's been good with the Twisted Fate. He's landed the gold cards and whatnot, but I feel it's more of... This game has gone towards Wungza. Wungza has been very on point with the initiation and basically redeeming himself based in the early game of this game. Yeah, it's like, it seems like that people tend to just go poorly with Jarvan in the jungle because they are just trying to gank really, really early on when he is very squishy as a champion. May need to get some kind of rework where he gets a little bit of buffed uh, extra early stats or something done. Yeah, it's just he is notoriously weak in the in the early game, so he doesn't really offer that much unless he maxes the uh, five, which he gets a little bit of armor, but that's about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, as well. 
terms of our twisted fate, I would just like to say he still has the sheen. Interesting. I feel like he's watching the stream and I feel like he's taunting me. Oh. So, yeah, I think he's just like, oh, you want Lich Man? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Harry. I ain't giving you what you want, buddy. It's. Sonya's or nothing. We just see the ult coming out from Crayola though, but it's Lucas taking a bit of the Silver Bolt's damage. And Bogswag's Bugs going quite aggressive, trying to use a charm onto Possible, does use the Death Bug instead. Wong's are missing the Flagon Drag, unfortunately. No, actually, no, he had it, just didn't use it. I thought I thought I heard that coming out, unfortunately. And Team Bok are able to disengage quite well from that fight. Definitely don't want to fight that. They are waiting in the shadows though. Kuki's going to be upon the face check, and he falls down instantly. Zizu picks up that kill. It's 3-1-3 for that ADC, and now the chase is on without that rumble, and it's Gazelle just going so deep, he's able to Sonya's with the Cataclysm into Monster into the Nair Ultimate! He able to stun up three of them, and that is the Wombo combo coming out from Team Volker. Lock them up, keep them stunned into one particular area, and then you have the Graves, Buckshot, Collateral Damage. Just shredding through people, ripping them into sh into pieces of bacon. Damn it, I had it going and I lost it in the last second, unfortunately. But Team Volker are able to secure the inhibitor turret right there and the inhibitor. And they're definitely in the driver's seat now in this game. Yeah, they are taking the game home. They are just destroying it. Just that last one play just pushed them over that edge. Just Breaking the base is the hardest thing to do, and they've managed to take out that base. But it does look like, while they're going to drag it, it does look like uh, Carbon Tax is going out for that Baron, just like, we have to take this Baron or we lose. They're gonna tighten up their game. Yeah, and it's a very good decision call coming out from Carbon Tax. The rest of Team Volker are backing up as we speak. They're all back in base. The only one who's really out of base is Gizel on that 6th but Destiny is on cooldown. <coughs> I doubt it will be up in time for Baron to be still alive. This is going to be a free man going towards Carbon Tax, saying, we're going to trade off my class game. You take bottom inhibitor, we take that Baron in buff. And now Gizal, he's got a face check into the enemy team. He's got the Baron as well. He does have Sonya's now, but he will fall down, giving him another kill towards Menasheep. Menasheep does fall to Wong, so the Cataclysm is trapping his three members. And the rest of Team Volga coming to assist him. It's Sis now leading the charge. It's Luke, picks up one, Collateral Damage picks up the second. Crayola's the only one that will fall next, and Boxbox escapes with her life. Can Boxbox survive to defend the rest of the team and the base? Probably unlikely. And Team Volker are like, take his L, we'll avenge him, and Boxbox hiding in the shadows assassinates and blows up Ziz. Yeah, well, at the moment, all Boxbox needs to be doing is just staying alive because all you need is one team member to have that Baron buff and it gives you so much power because the new minions are so incredibly strong but if Ari can stay alive and they can manage to just push down one of the lanes and take out the the, the, the inhibitor tower and possibly break the base like uh, Volker have done then that will put them at a really big advantage because they do have that Baron buff and if they can keep the Baron buff for as long as until the super minions manage to spawn, which I don't think is very likely, but still. Super, super minions plus Baron buff are just too strong right now. I'm, I'm telling you that, they're just too strong. Yeah, absolutely. Able to do quite a lot of damage. And I like the, I like the uh, bench spell pick up from Giselle. It, 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 I like it because he can avoid the charm coming up from box box and, and what, whatnot. But I think he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time then and just felt instantly his team were able to avenge his life. But, and Team Volker just... Now these teams, we haven't, in terms of research and how they play, we haven't really been able to get a lot of that and that was because they were absent for a few, several weeks. Team Volker in particular, they... I believe only played two games and were absent for three weeks. And they decided to return, I believe it was last week. And now we're seeing why they're, like, they're such a strong force. And Ziz gets locked up. He's about to fall. The problem is Asuna who snipes him down. He's like, you're getting away. Bullshit, I've got you. Now Crayola using the ultimate to chase. He's on. And they're only going to pick up the kill to Ziz. But Boxbox doing all the damage there. 
And DFG, I feel if DFG is gone. I don't think Bokong's gonna be able to do that. Bong's up. Bong got to Menace Sheep. Menace Sheep is down below half out. The rest of the team can't peel for him. Giselle forced to use that Sonya's. Luke is about to hit Mega Knife on as well. Giselle has the exhaust and gets a gold gun onto Asuna. Asuna can knock into a door thanks to Luke. Asuna will fall down. It's Wongzo who gets on the killing spree. 4 3 8. Now the Destiny coming out. Boxer. And the Boxer. Fox Fox. Forced to use the Sonya's, but he will fall down. Giving another kill towards Wongzo. Box Box and Wongza, if they had a child, it's gonna be Wongza. Oh, wow. Hell yeah, it will be, but um. Oh yeah, it would be. And now the rest oh, of God. Team Bok are pushing up into that mid lane. The only ones who can really defend, if anything, is gonna be Kuki and Crayola on that Rumble Leona, respectively. Not sure if they can do much, but thanks to the, town, the minions not being there, they have some breathing space. Metasheep is back up. Hasuda's up in 5, Box Box in 20. Yeah, so, um, it's, it's really, really interesting. Even though there's almost a 10,000 gold lead right now, it's still getting pushed both ways just because the amount of, the amount of skill that, that each team has. It's like, um, carbon tax do have mechanically more skill at the game, but Volker, it just seems like they're only winning these games because of their amount of co uh, cooperation that they've got in the team, so it, it does seem like Carbon Tax can play their champions better, and they would be really, really good in some kind of 1v1 tournament, but even like right now, again, they just got it all over the map. It was happening yeah. last game, I guess it's happening again, so... Yeah, a lot of times like, when teams who uh, don't have that communication, or most likely feel it's still a solo queue-like orientated game, you're gonna have that miscommunication, but when you have teams who say, no, we're dedicated, okay, granted, individually we might not be the best, we might not have the highest mechanics, and one of the biggest games I can recall was between Alter Ego, Ministry Wolf is going to be the first one to fall, and Zizu was nice him down with that collateral damage, Wongs is leading the charge, he's doing what Jarvis can do when he is tanking, as soon as he gets locked up, though, he's doing his best he can for his team, but he falls down to Luke, who picks up also an unstoppable kill, 6 one is Luke on that Nah. And an incredible play coming from Team Bok, the team coordination is incredible. Oh yeah, and now here comes the destruction of Bok, they just have so much damage right now. I don't even think anyone's used an elixir of iron, and they just destroy that tower. They do have that, um, that second um, dragon bot though, and they, they may even take out that... No, I was actually expecting to take out that top tower because they do still have, they did have about 15 20 seconds to go until, until they do something. <laughs> Team Boca trying to do a little sneaky fanatic ways, like anything, able to try try and catch that little catch up, like, oh, come on, walk into the fog of war, we'll kill you again. The little thing there, and that's just the team coordination that Team Boca are possessing. And, and I was, what I was trying to alliterate earlier was like the whole teamwork is. Is a bit superior compared to individual school, and I believe it was the match between Alter Ego and uh, yes. and who was the the opponents they played. This was both teams, both behemoths who have yet to fail the game, and that, that was back then. But then Alter Ego came out ahead. Anyway, yeah. so the team they were playing, Alter Ego, have a couple platinum players, individually platinum solo queue players, and that was their top laner. And at least someone else. But on the opposite team, they were all like they had two challenges, I think, and a few diamonds. So individually, it's in the favor of the challenge diamond. And in this in this situation, it's in favor of Box Box, who's just able to blow up Posmil. Posmil doing the typical support face checking. But what happened was Alter Ego were able to I believe it was 2-0 or 2-1 the the platinum team, and that was because of their teamwork and their cohesiveness as a nature, their synergy and their communication. And sometimes individual skill doesn't really mean that you're going to be the best. I mean, we've, you've mentioned exactly. this before, like, Carbon Tax, individually, they could probably win every single 1v1 tournament. But because this is a team game, this is League of Legends, which is a team game, five members, Team Volker showing a lot better team cohesiveness, better team communication and synergy. And that's why they're coming out ahead in these games. Yeah, that, that is, I, I could not agree with you more, like, it, it, it looks like they, we're trying to get a Baron uh, test going on right now, but... Oh, the, the, the Zonya is coming out from here. Yeah. Nice job, Skippy. 
Very well played by Giselle, who was able to gold cut onto Asuda, denying the fact that he did knock him up. They both were just stunned there for a while, as he was also hit by that solar, solar flare. And when the charm did come out, he was able to zonjus that away and survive. He did also bend the equalizer, so that was two ultimates, simply by one zonjus coming up from Giselle. So well played there, charm up to Osmil. First one, it's Wonka! Wonka, sorry! It's going so deep, he's only able to trap one person at Cataclysm. Kuki wasn't able to avenge himself does take Wongsa to the grave with him. It's a one-for-one -one trade. But meanwhile, this is all happening. The super mean one of the Nexus turrets, and Baron is free for the taking, and immediately Team Volk have gone for it, despite the fact that they don't have Smite. Yeah, I mean, if um, Carbon Tax go down and try and take this Baron and, and try and even just contest with them, they will lose a lot more in their base, so... I mean, while they did notice from the wards, uh, Vayne, Ari, and Lyra all just stayed back at the base and went, no, we're not gonna go and even try and take that Baron because we can't, we will lose our base decision. It was the wise decision. There is Suda hiding in the way, does go on to Gazelle, gets a smart answer with Gazelle, falls to his flash and ghost as well, he will be able to get away from safety. And Asuda simply taking the page out of Team Balkan's books, saying, oh, if you guys are gonna hide in wait and we face check you, I'll do the same thing. But not able to get the kill though, unfortunately. Yeah, well, um, a really big thing with, um, with Rek'Sai is most of the time, uh, when you're fighting enemies in really, really large waves of minions, like just then, um, the, the, say for example, if Rek'Sai was playing someone like um, Jarvan, for example, if he had have jumped in there and burst with the face, Twist of Fate would probably have just stayed there and, and tried to fight him because of those super-powered minions. But because Hasuda is playing Rek'Sai, he does get bonus fury for every minion he hits, and he does have the um, the Q where he can get uh, hit all of those minions at once. His fury got fully maxed out at two auto attacks, which is just crazy. So he could have just done so so much um, damage onto uh, to, to, to this fate, especially with that true damage coming out. It's super, super fast. Yeah, absolutely. Hasuda is forced to flash away. Destiny's also being used. In fact, guess what? Kizel's going. He went so deep. We took a page from his side. So I'm going to ulti right in. The Cataclysm was able to trap three, but that's a double kill going for Ziz. Can he get the pentakill? He surely wants it. All three tackles are quite low. He's like, no, give me that cookie. He's got a triple kill, but he can't get the penta, unfortunately. And that's going to be game for Team Volker. That is a 2 0 in this best of three in favor of Team Volker. And by God, they've, they've been on a hiatus, but they came back and they're yelling out at all the competition saying, We're here and we're here to win this. I feel like when they went on hiatus, I feel like they weren't just away from playing League. I think they went away and practiced. That's what it feels like to me right now, just working on working as a team. And it worked. How many more times can I put the word work in a sentence? I don't know, but they, they really, really did, I'm going to say it again, work very, very efficiently together as a team, going to just right at the start of the game, just showing off their teamwork skills and just grouping up all together and and going off to do that uh, that, that counter jungling that right at the start to take that blue buff and, and get a few kills. Although it was warded by um by carbon tax and if they didn't have those wards down, I can tell you it would have just been a double kill straight up. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Team Volka just coming in, they've been on that highest, definitely working as a team and coming out so strong for this best of three and in the round robin. They're able to dish out and give Carbon Tax their first official loss. Again, Carbon Tax, they did also, they've only had one loss, and that was because they were absent one of the weeks. But they were technically undefeated, and now they've finally tasted defeat. Hopefully, Carbon Tax are able to take this defeat and come back in, I guess, in the future rounds, in a few weeks. Come out a lot stronger and actually learn from this experience. Because it would be a shame to see them just completely like, sizzle out from a game. It was incredible, like they had a, such a good performance game too. But I'm sure that they can come back in a later round. Now guys, thank you for joining us for this best of three. That was round six of 21 rounds. So there's surely several, in fact a lot, how many? 21 minus 6, 15 more games to go for best of threes. The teams can get enough points in order to accumulate over time.
how this point system works, every time you win you get 3 points, you lose you get none. And the top 8 teams with the most points get a spot in the Arc Light Gaming Grand Finals in the tournament system which are the top 8 teams again. Hopefully we see, we're see we seeing a lot of these teams coming out being strong and hopefully we can get a great performance tournament time. But I really want to see Carbon Tax coming back in the next few rounds and just showing us what they really got. But Harry man, sorry for calling you Invisi earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I was like, so you're treating it like an insult, man. <laughs> yeah, now now it's just like, man, you're such an invisi. <laughs> now, once we get flack from invisi himself. But honestly, man, thank you for joining us, uh, joining me in particular, and uh, us, the stream and whatnot. Although we had a bit of that technical issue early on when you, I thought you died mm. for a second, it was, we were able to get that up and running. It was just fantastic. It was honestly incredibly have you have you tonight. It was incredible. Oh, yeah. well, well, thanks for having me on the stream, and um, it's some really, really exciting games coming out, and some really big plays, so some of these things are just incredible, and it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, don't go anywhere exactly, because in Monday, that's going to be the next time we'll upload the stream, uh, have the stream up, and there will be another featured matchup. That's going to be round seven. It's times at 6.30 Australian Eastern, daylight savings time. AEDT. So tune in on Monday for that next one. I'll probably be casting that one. Not sure who'll be my co-caster there. Maybe it might be you, Harry. 